The newscast with our top focus on France. The country has arrested four people as part of an investigation into a knife attack in Paris on September 25th. The four held are of Pakistani origin as is the main suspect. On September 25th, a stabbing took place in Paris's Rue Nicolas Upper. This is outside the former offices of satirical magazine Charlie Hebdo. A judicial source informed news agencies that the four were arrested on Monday for allegedly encouraging the attacker. One of them is charged for taking part in a terrorist conspiracy. The remaining three were set to be charged as well. The four were suspected of knowing about the attack beforehand and encouraging Zaheer Hassan Mahmood to carry it out. The main suspect in the attack was an 18-year-old man from Pakistan. This video apparently records the moment when the ex-governor of the Mexican state of Jalisco was killed in a restaurant. Por más grandes que sean, Aristoteles Sandoval was holidaying in the resort town of Puerto Vallarta. He was out with three other people and a 15-strong bodyguard team provided by the state who couldn't save him. The attack happened at 1.40 in the morning. The ex-governor got up from the table and went to the bathroom. That's where an armed man shot him in the back. Killings have become common at local level in Mexican politics, but the murder of an ex-governor is still very unusual. The investigation into who was behind the attack is just beginning, but it's not going to be easy. That's because, the state attorney said, the staff from the restaurant cleaned up the crime scene, took away evidence and even removed security cameras. Three and a half years ago, amid persistent opposition protests, Venezuela's embattled President Nicolás Maduro announced he was unilaterally calling for a constituent assembly to rewrite the constitution written by his predecessor, deceased President Hugo Chávez. I summon the native constituent power to achieve the peace that the Republic needs to overthrow the fascist coup and so that the people with their sovereignty will be able to impose peace, harmony and a true national dialogue. Even appeals from the Pope couldn't stop him from forming a 500-member body with superpowers above all other institutions. Critics were quick to predict that its real aim was to annihilate the opposition-controlled parliament and consolidate a dictatorship. Now, a vehicle of the United Nations military observers along the line of control was hit by an unidentified object. The vehicle carrying UN military observers was impacted by an unidentified object while conducting routine monitoring activities near Avala Court. The vehicle is mandated to observe and report on ceasefire violations at the line of control. The UN personnel and driver were not harmed, but the vehicle sustained some damage. We on spoke with United Nations spokesperson Farhan Haq, who confirmed that the vehicle carrying UN military observers was impacted by an unidentified object while conducting routine monitoring activities near Avala Court. A vehicle was hit by an unidentified object. Uh, like, like I said, uh, no one was harmed in this incident, but a vehicle sustained some damage and we are investigating the incident. Well, while China has put Australia in the diplomatic freezer, one of our former leaders was hosting a top Beijing official. Kevin Rudd and China's foreign minister taking part in an online forum where Australia was warned siding with America could be a mistake. A former Australian Prime Minister and China's Foreign Minister exchanging pleasantries. You are a welcome guest. You are a household name in China. Before Wang Yi pointed the finger at the US over the bitter trade war and a crumbling relationship, accusing America of aiming at starting a new Cold War and forming a new Iron Curtain. With the change in presidency a month away, Wang Yi is pushing Joe Biden to change fish. course. It is important that the United States policy toward China return to objectivity and sensibility as early as possible. Warning the US and allies, including Australia, not to form a coalition against China.
19 years, baby. The falling snow said winter, but it felt like springtime, a rebirth to Termaine Hicks, set free on Wednesday after 19 years behind bars. I felt like I was 100 pounds lighter. The snow was coming down. It was a beautiful day to me. The Philadelphia man in his first TV interview since his exoneration on rape and other charges. Has your story ever changed? Never. In 2001, he says he ran to an alley after hearing a woman's screams. He says he reached for his cell phone to call 911. That's when a responding Philadelphia police officer opened fire, striking Hicks three times. Officers said they caught him raping the woman, claiming he pointed a gun at them. And then you were arraigned and charged with rape as you were shackled to a hospital bed. And I'm sitting there like, what the hell? No. Hicks was convicted of rape and aggravated assault, largely on the testimony of officers. But in a stunning turn, the Philadelphia DA's office recently concluded much of the testimony against Hicks was false. DNA and other contradictory evidence cast further doubt. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has mocked COVID-19 vaccines, spreading bizarre rumors about them, claiming that the one developed by Pfizer-BioNTech could turn people into crocodiles or bearded ladies and the government wouldn't be responsible. Even while launching the country's mass inoculation program, President Bolsonaro said he would not get vaccinated. In the Pfizer contract, he said it's very clear, we're not responsible for any side effects. If you turn into a crocodile, it's your problem, Bolsonaro said on Thursday. He went on, if you become superhuman, if a woman starts to grow a beard or if a man starts to speak with an effeminate voice, they will not have anything to do with it, he said, referring to the drug manufacturers. The Brazilian president has been skeptical of the coronavirus crisis from the beginning. Well, meanwhile, there's been utter devastation in the Maspumelele informal settlement in Cape Town. A fire ripped through the area, destroying over a thousand homes and leaving scores of people destitute. Community members are trying to salvage whatever they can this morning, while the city of Cape Town works to declare a local disaster. The residents, the thousands of residents here in Masipumilele, they are utterly devastated, but um, they are trying to pick through the pieces. As I um, showed you a little earlier, residents are trying to see if they can salvage anything in um, the what you are seeing, the heaps of um, corrugated iron. We've seen um, what is the leftover of some equipment from some household items like your washing machines, stoves. That's, it, it's just scraps that are basically left over.
God, this brick's in the air like a hundred feet. No way. Oh! Oh! There were bricks in the air over the building top, man. Oh! Oh!